so very, very few therapists have actually ever engaged in deliberate practice. And to clarify, deliberate practice does not mean seeing clients. Seeing clients is considered work performance. Okay. Right? Deliberate practice is something you do separately when there isn't a live person in front of you. If there's a live person in front of you, you can't uh, repeat the same skills again and again. You can't uh, isolate certain skills. You can't get feedback immediately from an expert, that kind of thing. All right? Right. Now, if maybe I should start by defining what deliver practice is. Should we, should we do that sure. first? Just yeah. to, okay. So uh, just to, uh, it goes into a lot more detail in the book, but to keep it kind of right. tight right here, deliver practice is when you are getting feedback from an expert who's observing your actual work performance, so live or by video, they identify certain skills just beyond your ability, discrete skills. They teach you how to rehearse those skills, how to practice those skills, and then you repeat it many, many times, and then uh, you measure the results. So for example, um, have you ever learned a uh, musical instrument? Yeah, yeah, a guitar, and I oh. worked at in late in life trying to pick up piano, but okay, didn't get very far. <laughs> so, did you uh, have a coach for either of those instruments? Uh, no, I, you know, I got a few lessons uh, here ah. and there. Uh, okay, I, I don't know if I would call it a coach. The piano, actually, I I took lessons for several years from. Oh, several coaches. years. Okay. Yeah. So imagine you went to your uh, piano teacher. And you said, so I want to be a professional level uh, pianist, but I don't really have time to practice. I'm just too busy. <laughs> can you give me some books so I can read about piano theory and I'll just kind of memorize it, maybe write a few papers about it. And then I just want to perform. Yeah, and, that's not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> they, they would just say, no, that's not going to work. Yeah. Okay. So uh, did you ever play sports? Any kind yeah, of? Yeah. Yeah. In high school, I played football, ran track. Oh. Okay, great. So yeah. imagine you went to your coach, uh, either track or football coach, and you said, look, I, you know, I want to compete on the team. Uh, I just don't have time to practice. Uh, you know, I got too much academics. Yeah. So can you give me some books so I can learn about the sport? And I'll write a few papers about it or something, and then I'll just show up and I'll, I'll be really good. Right? And imagine what they would have said. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, so in both music and athletics, include, and many other fields, the bulk of the training and learning goes on in what's called solitary deliberate practice when the, uh, the person who's training has exercises that have been assigned by the coach or the teacher and they're running them through drills again and again, right? So for yeah. basketball, it could be uh, shooting free throws from the three point line, right? Uh, a player might do a hundred a day or for a musician, it might be doing chords might do a few hours a day of various uh, drills, right? Yeah, and like, you point out that if there's a difficult uh, passage in a piece, they will just focus on that passage and do it over and over and over and over again until it's right. totally automatic. Exactly, so what's happening is the skills are moving into what we call procedural memory. Mm -hmm. So your brain can do them automatically, and that then frees your mind up to be able to focus on the more complex uh, parts of the performance. 